comrades, I, I, I want to say a few words about what led us to hold this uh, meeting. That, that, that initial conversation, those initial conversations that we held with Henry and Duncan and, and others, we had uh, grown increasingly concerned about the direction of uh, U.S. foreign policy, U.S. imperialist foreign policy under the Biden administration. Um, I mean, they had done some good things domestically. Uh, the National Labor Relations Board has played an important role, you know? Right, Cooper? Yes. Scotty? Um, and and there had been in some other things, but we, we, we were... Uh, increasingly concerned, uh, alarmed about the Cold War against China, you know, the, the uh, attack on Venezuela and attempt to isolate uh, and destabilize uh, Nicaragua. And, and uh, we were uh, growing outraged at the attempt to choke Cuba to death, you know, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to choke Cuba to death. You heard Arturo the other day talk about the uh, uh, impact of the blockade and that the situation now is worse than it was during the special period. And ration milk, you know, and that kind of thing. Uh, and, and we were like, where is the peace movement? Um, where, where is the solidarity movement? What, what are we doing, you know, to change this? Uh, are we doing enough? And, and, and then uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. Boom, you know? And, and the peace movement said, beep. Russia invades Ukraine, and you got a beep out of the peace movement. And the beep, I guess I got to practice my beeps, were, were, were divided into five or six different parts. Split, you know, nobody could agree about anything. And, and we went to the demonstrations, and we were like, where have all the African Americans gone, you know? Where have the Latinos gone? The Arabs, Native Americans, Asians, you know? Uh, we, 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 we saw a peace movement that was largely elderly. All due respect to us elderly people. I ain't young as I used to be. Um, uh, suburban, suburban, you know? Um, and this complexion, uh, well, it needed to be improving. And so we, we, we thought, what can we do as a party to, to change this, to, 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 to bring forward working class folk, to, to bring forward people of color to help um, energize and revitalize uh, and provide working class leadership to this peace movement. I mean, that's what we were, because the peace movement exists, like Rosa Leo correctly said, we ain't trying to build, create something new. We're not sectarian in that respect, but how can we, how can we strengthen it? And then there was that terrible day on October the 7th, you know, you heard Ada talk about it uh, yesterday and uh, a comment from the Palestinian party uh, this morning and, and the killings uh, and the counter killings, uh, the number now in the tens of thousands and the terror on both sides. Uh, you have to say that because that's what happened. And, and uh, and you know, I was talking to Arturo and Rosanna yesterday, 
and and Arturo said, you know, Joe, it, isn't this very similar to what happened uh, when the trade centers were hit, 9-11? And you know, he's right. The, the parallels are, are striking. Uh, Osama hit the World Trade Center, uh, and then Bush invaded Iraq. And, and there ensued 10 years of war. 300,000 civilians killed. For what? Weapons of mass dis destruction? There were oil. Huh? And, 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 uh, Bush is a war criminal. Am I wrong? You know, comrades, uh, I was in South Africa when 9-11 when hit. And I remember it very clearly, you know, I had gone to lunch and um, I came back uh, to my comrade's house. I was staying with a comrade from the uh, African National Congress, may he rest in peace. Uh, his name is Jackie Selebi. Um, and he was one of the top people in the party in the African National Congress. Uh, and they put their most trusted people in the most sensitive positions. And they had named Jackie as the commissioner of police in South Africa. And first time I ever had a cop as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the last time. <laughs> but if you're going to have a cop as a friend, it's good that he be a Marxist and a national liberation fighter. You know what I'm saying? And, and I walked into the house um, just as the second plane hit, hit, the, hit the tower. And, and Jackie said, damn, Joe. And then he looked at me and he said, you know what? I bet you that's Osama. And I said, who? He said, Osama bin Laden. Who is that? I had never heard of him before, you know, and, but they had heard of him. And of course, they had to have heard of him. It was, it was their business to have heard of them. And of course, then, if you think about it, there was that bombing at the US Embassy in Nairobi before. Um, you know, a couple of days later, I, I had uh, a meeting with the General Secretary of the South African Communist Party, Blade and Zamande, and, and uh, Blade greeted me and we embraced. And, you know, the first thing he said is, how's the party, Joe? How's the party? Did, 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 did anybody from the party uh, die in the Twin Towers? And I said, no, I'm not aware. Of and, and then there was a guy, I don't know who he was, who was standing near us. And he said, I'm glad they hit the World Trade Center. I'm glad they got them guys. And, and, and Blaze said, what did you say? He said, I'm, and he said, have you lost your mind? What, what kind of statement is that? He said, workers died. He said, he, thousands of workers died when they hit the World Trade Center. We, we don't support that, you know? I mean, Blaze went into this dude like <laughs> nobody's business. And he was right. I told Rosanna the story yesterday. She said, yeah, a fireman died. You know, we don't celebrate that. It took me a month to get home, you know? Everything was shut down. The airline I was flying on Swiss Air went bankrupt. 
I'd buy a one-way ticket back. And I got back to a changed country. Huh? Changed world after 9-11. You know, just before uh, 9-11, the main, one of the main things that was being discussed in this country was reparations. Lucy, you remember that? Reparations. Um, and, uh, and I was in South Africa to attend the World Conference on Racism and Xenophobia. It was the main topic. Osama hit the World Trade. You didn't hear the word reparations ever again. It was like off the agenda. Nobody was talking about it. It was, you know, out of mind, out of memory. Change, changed world. You know, I was, uh, after getting back, I was, uh, we got messages from parties around the world and and uh, I was reading uh, them and I came across one where a leader of a uh, important uh, party, big party, influential party, party that I have great love for actually. And, and this party leader said, uh, in response to 9-11, we are not laughing, but we ain't crying either. And I, again, I was, huh? What did you just say? You're not crying. Walkers died. And I mean, you know, um, the international communist and workers movement has always taken great pains to make a distinction between the American people on the one side and the American government on the other, between the uh, uh, American ruling class and, and, the, and the American working class, you know? And, and, and that's a very important uh, distinction. And, and, and the internationalism, the working class internationalism has always been mutual and, and reciprocal, you know? We're, we're, we're trying to build a, a international working class movement that, 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 that acknowledges the pain and suffering and the humanity of everybody. Isn't that what we're trying to do? Um, and, 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 and whether it be uh, Canadian workers or workers in the UK or workers in Pakistan or in Argentina, or Chile or uh, India or uh, uh, France or Israel or Palestine, we, we side with, with the workers and the people against the imperialists and, and their lackeys. Um, but, but you know what, what, what happens is that the crimes of US imperialism are so severe, are so onerous, are so ugly. I mean, imagine if you lived in Iraq and 300,000 people had been killed, how you would feel about it, you know? And, and, and when you don't see uh, people standing up and protesting that, you can understand how, how, how uh, folks in other countries' uh, understanding of that difference between the American people and the American ruling class constricts. They don't see. Um, and therefore, we are so gratified and so encouraged uh, by the mass protests that have developed uh, uh, against the carpet bombing and genocide of Gaza. Um, and, and, and we have to join with those protests because we, we uh, demand a ceasefire. We, we demand uh, that the Biden administration end its 
military support, hell, and this economic support for the state of Israel. Don't we? I mean, We oppose the Biden administration's foreign policy, uh, uh, but we're not surprised by it, are we? I mean, what did Lead Belly say? He said, it's a bourgeois town, <laughs> didn't he? D.C. is a bourgeois town. New York, Chicago, bourgeois towns. But there are workers living in that town. The workers living in the town. And, and, and when workers don't agree with the politics and the policies of those who are running the town, what do we do? We, we build mass movements to change those policies. Don't we? We, 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 we occupy. You know, we we strike, uh, we 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 lobby, we vote, uh, we do everything that we possibly can in order to, and, and if we have to shut it down, we shut it down. Isn't that what the auto workers did? The big three refused to negotiate; they shut it down, and and and. And that's what we have to do in, in, in order to, as that trade union has said Friday night at the PW Forum, to make the, 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 the policies of, of the administration so uh, politically unpalatable that they have to change their policies. That's what, that's what helped end the Vietnam War. But, but Comrades, we, we, we have a choice coming up, and, and, and I want you to hear me on this. Some of you may not agree, but that's all right. I want you to hear what I'm saying. We have a choice coming up between, on the one hand, a bourgeois town, and on the other hand, a fascist concentration camp. When I was 15 years old, I went to the 10th World Festival of Youth and Students. And, and they took us to the Buchenwald concentration camp. And they uh, uh, showed us the gas chambers where they took the communists. They, they came for us first. And then they took the socialists and, and the disabled and, and the Roma, huh? Yeah. And the Jews. And then they took us to a museum and, and, and they showed that they, they, they they showed lampshades made of human skin. I'm not making this up. That's why Dimitrov talked about fascism as bestial. Huh? Isn't that how he described it? Um, this is what we're up against. That's who marched on 9-11, the, 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 the neo-Nazis, the Klan, the not-so-proud boys. That's... So these are the stakes that uh, you want to help the colonized? I do. I've been working all of my life to help the colonize. And the best way that we can help the colonize, comrades, is to defeat US imperialist foreign policy here at home. Um, 
opening, Martin said it 30, 40 years ago, that the U.S. government, the U.S. corporations are the greater, greatest purveyors of violence and colonialism around the world. It was true then, it's even truer today. So if you defeat it at home, you'll be doing, the Israeli government wouldn't last a half second without the support of U.S. imperialism. I mean, it, okay, I've made my point. <laughs> Comrades, uh, uh, we, we, the point I'm trying to make is that we have to keep our eyes on the prize, you know? As, as we continue the long uh, and uh, difficult, but also joyous uh, march uh, for freedom. You know, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois um, once said, and Du Bois was a great fighter for peace. They, they jailed him at 83 years old for his commitment to the fight for peace. He was the head of the Peace Information Center. And they put handcuffs on this man at, at 83 because he refused to cow down and, and bow down to, to US imperialism. And, uh, and during those days, uh, Du Bois said, I bent, but I did not break. Du Bois once wrote that uh, peace uh, is not an end to be achieved, but the gateway to a new civilization. Huh? Gateway to a new civilization. And, and we are walking, uh, marching. Uh, some of us are dancing toward the gate, you know? We're, 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 we're trying to get to the gate and, and, and the gate is socialism. You know, the gate is uh, a working class uh, state, working class power. That's the gate. Um, but we gotta uh, get through that gate to that new uh, society, that new civilization that W.E.B. had in mind uh, where, where where we will, um, in the old, in the words of the old spiritual, uh, go down by the river, uh, lay down our sword and shield, and and study war no more. And and that's what we're trying to do, you know. Um, so, comrades, uh, I just want to end by uh, saying thank you, thank you very much for. We, we've walked a mile on that road at this conference. Uh, the, party, the party has a big contribution to uh, uh, making and solidifying the fight for peace. Um, and uh, with all of you, I am sure we're going to get there. So long live Palestine. Long live the Communist Party of Israel. Long live the Communist Party USA. Long live our fight for peace and justice. Thank you very much.